If you're struggling with your debt and you're trying to figure out what you should do right now to put a hole in your debt this year, you're in the right place because we're going to be going over five strategies that you can use right now to pay down your debt quickly. What's up, everybody? I am Just Parit Singh from the MinorityMindset.com, where money minds read the rich. Debt is a tool. It can make you very wealthy or it can keep you poor depending on how you use the debt. If you're using debt to buy cars and clothes and shoes and purses, well now this debt that you're using is keeping you poor, but it's making your banker rich. But if you're using debt to buy rental properties, hard assets that pay you with cash flow, now this debt can make you rich. The number one reason why the majority of people will never have a chance to ever become wealthy is because they're using all of their money to go out and buy things, liabilities, which keep them poor. And then when they want more liabilities, they're going out and they're financing these liabilities through the help of debt. So now you're going to the bank to help them pay for your car. You're going to the bank with your credit card to help them pay for your wardrobe. You're going to the bank to help them buy you some new name brand clothes. See, when you use debt, you're using tomorrow's income to pay for today's expenses. Because when you go out and you borrow $1,000 from the bank, whether it's from a loan or a credit card or a home equity line of credit, you're borrowing $1,000 and you're using this money today. Then you're going to have to pay this $1,000 back from tomorrow's income plus interest. Now, if you borrowed this $1,000 from the bank and this $1,000 that you borrowed can make you $2,000, then it's no big deal because now you can take this $2,000, pay back the bank, pay them the interest and put some money in your pocket. So this debt doesn't bother you. But if you take this $1,000 from the bank and now you go out and buy liabilities, which are losing you money, well, now this is how you become poorer each and every day because now you have to go to work tomorrow to pay off yesterday's expenses and then you got to go to work the day after that to pay off yesterday's interest. Now, while this type of consumer debt can destroy so many people's finances and it can destroy so many people's opportunity to ever become wealthy, there is a way out if you have the right financial education and if you know how to get rid of this consumer debt the right way, that way now you can use your money the right way to make yourself wealthy instead of just making the bank rich. And it doesn't matter what kind of debt you have. Student loans, credit cards, mortgages, car loans, the things that I'm gonna go over apply to all kinds of debt. And these are things that you can start doing today. That way you can start paying off this debt a lot faster than you would otherwise. So let's jump into these five things. But before I do that, I need you to do me a quick favor and smash that thumbs up button below. And if you haven't already, be sure to join our brand new free Discord server called the Guac Talk community. Because as we all know, extra guac is truly a symbol of extra wealth. And in this community, you can chat with other minority mindset thinkers about how to invest in real estate, the stock market, the cryptocurrency market, and all things building wealth. This community is completely free, so if you want to chat with and network with other minority mindset thinkers, I'll put the link to how you can join our free Discord server in the description below. The first thing you got to do before you do anything else is you have to organize your debt. You got to know how much debt you have, you got to know the different types of debt that you have, and you need to know how much interest these debts are costing you. If you do not know this, you will not be able to come up with the proper strategy to pay off your debt quickly. This part can be a little bit painful depending on how much debt you have because you're going to have to look at exactly how much debt you have and you're going to see how much this is costing you every single day. But you have to do this in order to get started. You need to list out every different type of debt that you have, how much this debt is costing you, meaning what's the interest rate and how much of this debt that you actually carry. Once you do that, I need you to be honest with yourself and I need you to ask yourself, how disciplined are you financially? Are you still that person that got you into this debt in the first place or have you changed? Maybe you got into this debt five years ago and you turned your finances around and you no longer spend the way that you did. Are you disciplined now? Yes or no? Once you answer that question for yourself, then you can pick a strategy. The debt snowball strategy or the debt avalanche strategy. The debt snowball strategy is the strategy that Dave Ramsey talks about all the time. What this says is you are going to list your debts not by the interest rate that you're paying, but by the size of the debt. And what you're going to do here is you're going to pay off the smallest debt first and then go to the next smallest and then the next smallest. The whole idea behind this is you're going to ignore the interest rates and you're going to pay off debts in a way where you can pay off the smallest balance first that way we can get the small wins, that way we can get the psychological reassurance that you're doing something right and that you're winning. Here, with the debt avalanche model, what you're gonna do, this is assuming that you're more disciplined, that you have the ability to control your spending and you have the ability to stick to a financial plan. Here, you're gonna organize your debts based off of the interest rates. And then you're gonna pay off the highest interest rate debt first because that's the debt that's costing you the most money. Because if one debt is costing you 20% a year and another debt is costing you 7% a year, you're paying way more in interest on the 20% debt. So you wanna pay that one off first. 
This debt avalanche model goes with that method. The reason why this is for people who are more financially disciplined is because you're not gonna get those same psychological wins as fast as here, because here, you're paying off the smallest balance first. So you'll pay off one debt faster here than here, but in this model, you'll be able to keep more money in your pocket because now you're attacking the debts that are costing you the most money. The reason I need you to be financially disciplined if you do this one, even though it's gonna save you more money, is because if you don't have that financial discipline and now you're trying to pay off your first debt balance, which is a big debt balance, which has a high interest rate, and you keep paying it off, paying it off, paying it off, but you're not seeing that big difference, that big kind of win where the debt goes away yet, well then you might get demotivated. And if you do that, and now you stop paying off your debt, now you're in a worse position than if you would've just stuck to this model. So this is where you gotta be honest with yourself. If you're financially disciplined, if you can stick to a financial system, then go with this. It'll keep more money in your pocket. If you are not, then stick with this because this will help you pay off your debt. So this is what the process would look like, assuming that you only have three debts. You have student loans, you have credit card debt, and then you have your mortgage. Let's assume that your student loans are costing you 6% a year, your credit cards are costing you 16% a year, and your mortgage is costing you 4.5% a year, and you have $15,000 in student loans, $22,000 in credit card debt, and $300,000 on your mortgage. Now, if you're following the snowball method, now what you wanna do, again, is go by the smallest balance first. In this case, you're gonna go with student loans, then the credit card, and then the housing debt. Now remember, your credit card debt is costing you way more, 16% a year. But with this debt snowball method, you're trying to go for the big wins first. You wanna attack the smallest balance first, which is why you're gonna go after the student loans because you'll be able to pay this off quicker than the larger balance, so that way you get those psychological wins and you can get rid of some of the debts. If you have that financial discipline and you can stick to that financial system, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna pay off the most expensive debt first, the credit card debt. It'll take you a little bit longer here because you have more debt, but now you're getting rid of the highest interest rate first. That way now you can stop bleeding cash and then you can go to the next one that's costing you the most money. Here are the student loans that they need to tax the housing payment. So here, you're gonna go by the interest rates. Here, you're gonna go by the balance. I don't care which one you do as long as you stick with the strategy and I just need you to be honest with yourself because the worst thing that you can do is say, oh yeah, I like the idea of trying to save some money here and paying off the higher interest rates first, but then you can't stick with it because then you get demoralized or you get demotivated. If that's you, be honest and just stay here. It's okay as long as you just stick with the strategy. The second thing that I want you to do is I want you to stop sending in monthly debt payments. I'll show you why. So let's assume that you have $30,000 of credit card debt and this is costing you, let's say 15% annually. And so right now your monthly payments for the purposes of this video are $500 a month. So what most people do when they have this type of situation is they're gonna send in a check for $500 a month or it's gonna be a direct deposit, whatever it is, an automatic payment where you're paying $500 a month to your credit card company. I want you to stop doing that. If you follow that model, so let's say option one, and in this model you're paying $500 a month, it's gonna take you 112 months to pay this off, and you're gonna end up paying this $30,000 plus $25,800 in interest. Instead, what I want you to do is option Two. In this case, instead of sending $500 a month, I want you to send in $250 every two weeks. So now you're gonna send in bi-weekly payments and this is essentially gonna end up being the same. You're sending in $250 every two weeks or $500 over the course of every four weeks, but now you're not gonna pay off your debt in 112 months, you're gonna pay off your debt in just 95 months and now you're gonna pay the same $30,000 of your principal balance, which is what you owe, but in the interest side of things, instead of paying $25,800, you're only gonna pay $21,200. So you're gonna save over $4,500 in interest, and you're gonna save another year of paying off this credit card bill just because now you're paying every two weeks instead of every month. This is one of the simplest hacks to pay off your debt quicker, and the reason why this works is because in this situation, option one, you're gonna send in 12 months worth of this payment every single year because you're sending in $500 a month and you're gonna do that 12 times. In this situation, there are 52 weeks a year, which means you're gonna send in 26 
payments of $250, which ends up being 13 payments of $500 a year, because in this situation, you're sending in $250 26 times, which is the same as sending in $500 13 times, but you don't even see it happen because in this situation, you're doing it gradually over the course of a year. So you won't even notice the difference in your finances in your bank account, but it's going to really show up in your bank account when you see how much faster you can pay this down versus this down. Now you know in what order to pay off your debts, and now you know how to pay off your debts even quicker. The third thing you got to do is you want to attack your debts even harder. And the quickest and the simplest way to attack your debts even harder is to cut down some of your expenses so you have some extra cash. And now when you have this extra cash, throw it at your debt payments. That way now you have more money going directly to the principal value of your debt. Because when you pay this extra money to your debt payments, you don't got to pay any interest on that. So anytime you send in an extra $100, the $100 is going directly to your principal balance and you don't have to pay any interest on that. So this allows you to pay off your debt way faster, but you got to learn how to find this cash. This is where right now you want to cut back on some of your expenses. That way you have some extra cash in your pocket because one of the easiest ways to keep more cash in your pocket is just by not spending it. So if you don't got to go on vacation or if you don't got to go buy those brand name clothes or if you don't got to go out to eat, this is an easy way to put a little bit more cash in your pocket that you can throw directly towards your debt because now you have some extra cash and instead of just spending this money, you're going to take this extra cash in your pocket and you're going to use it to pay down your debt. That way now you don't have to worry about this debt anymore. This is something that takes a lot of sacrifice and this is something you have to be able to do that way you have the financial discipline to actually build wealth. Because it's not just a matter of sacrificing some of the nice things that you want, it's knowing what's important to you and doing whatever it takes to make that happen. Plus, everybody has at least a few thousand dollars worth of stuff in their home that they don't use. Old clothes, old furniture, old TVs, old phones, old computers, old electronics. Everybody has a bunch of stuff sitting around in their home that's just sitting there collecting dust. If you have the stuff that you don't need, sell it, and when you got that extra cash, use it to pay down this debt. This is an easy and simple way that way now you have some more cash that we can throw just at your debt, but I don't want you to live broke for the rest of your life. The whole idea behind being financially educated and becoming wealthy is not so you can keep pinching pennies and keep couponing, it's so you can live the life you want, buy the things you want, enjoy the luxury you want without worrying about the price. But in order to get there, you have to know the financial discipline that it actually takes. And that's why now, once you know how to control your spending, now it's all about growing the pie and earning more money. Because the fastest way to pay down your debt is to first have a strategy. We talked about that. You pick the debt avalanche, you pick the debt snowball. Then you gotta know some of the basic hacks, like just by doing the bi-weekly payments instead of doing the monthly payments. Now, it's all about finding some extra cash and throwing it at your debt, because like I said just a second ago, every extra dollar that you put towards your debt payments is going directly towards your principal balance and you don't have to pay any interest on that. So the more extra cash you have, the more you'll be able to pay down your debt faster. So the fastest way to pay down your debt is not just by following some of these hacks, it's by getting more cash. And the simplest and quickest way to get some more cash is to cut back on some of your expenses. But at the end of the day, there's a limit to how much you could cut your expenses. There's a limit to how much you can squeeze pennies out of yourself, but there's no limit to how much money you can earn. So what I want you to do is first, you gotta have the financial discipline of knowing how to live below your means because that's the discipline you need to understand how to manage your money. If you don't have that discipline, it doesn't matter if you're making $100,000 a year or $10 million a year. If you don't know how to manage the money you have, you will never be able to build wealth. But once you know how to do that, now I want you to think a little bit bigger. How can you expand the pie? How can you grow the amount of money that you're making because there's no limit to how much money that you can earn. And if you can earn more money, now what you want to do is you want to take this extra cash and throw it towards your debt. And the faster you can earn this extra cash, the faster you can pay down this debt. Some of the obvious ways to earn some more money are by putting a little bit more effort into your job. Maybe you're working overtime. Maybe you get a promotion. Maybe you get a raise. Maybe you get a bonus. Maybe you're going to work a second side job. Or maybe you can try to get another job in sales where you have more upside potential where now you're earning on commission. These are all ways that you can earn more money at your job. But I want you to also understand what the full range of possibilities are. We are living in the digital age, the internet age. And what I need you to do is I want you to spend some time learning how you can make money on the internet. Because the way the internet works is people around the world are spending time on their phones and their computers. And more and more people around the world are doing this now than ever before. And this is a trend that is not slowing down and it's not going to slow down anytime in the near future. So what I need you to do, instead of just working harder to job, which is great, that's an accessible way for you to start earning some more money right now. But if you want to really be able to scale the amount of money that you're making, which you can use 
to now pay down your debt and you can use to help build your wealth by investing into assets, you need to know how to make money on the internet. The way it works is you have to understand how to create content, how to drive eyeballs to whatever it is you have, whatever brand you have, you need to create content, get eyeballs onto you, and you need to learn how to turn these eyeballs into dollars. Look, the easiest and fastest way to pay down your debt is to first have the strategy, you have the financial discipline, you have the financial education, and once you have those things, you have the system, you just need more money to throw into the system, that way now the system has cash to actually pay itself off. And so now if you wanna do that faster, you need some more cash. Yes, you can work harder at your job, but if you really wanna get there faster, you need to know how to create new streams of income and the internet has made it more accessible than ever. That doesn't mean it's easy. It's actually very hard because not everybody has access to the internet. But what I want you to do is understand how you can turn the internet into a machine that's printing you money. But you have to learn how to make money on the internet. How do you produce content that people want to see? Now, how do you turn this content into something that's going to produce you dollars? If you can figure that system out, you will have a new stream of income that you can use to pay down your debt and start buying you assets. Plus, once you start seeing more of the financial success and you have more of a financial breathing cushion, you're going to be more interested in learning more about how do you actually buy assets? How do you create passive income? How do you create new income streams from the money that you have? How do you invest your money to build wealth? This is what financial education is all about. First, creating the financial financial breathing room and then it's all about buying assets that way assets can pay you with more money because at the end of the day nobody can work 24 hours a day seven days a week but your money can this is why you need to have the financial breathing room because if you're working all day and night just to pay off your debt you will never have the opportunity to build wealth the way you build wealth is by owning the assets and so if you do want to learn more about how you can start generating passive income by investing your money our team has put together a free guide on how you can start generating passive income today and some different strategies that you can use to start investing your money for passive income this guide is completely free when you sign up for a daily newsletter so if you want to learn more and see how you can start generating passive income by investing your money i'll put the link to how you can download this guide in the description below and the fifth and final step to really paying down this debt as fast as possible is to not make the same mistakes that got you into this financial mess in the first place because if you're spending all your time now working to come up with the right debt payment strategy and now you're cutting your costs so you have some extra cash you're working hard to earn some extra cash that way now you're just throwing money at your debt and then you go out and you see this brand new tv on sale and you're like oh this two thousand dollar tv would look really nice in my room except I don't have $2,000. And then the salesperson tells you that this sale is gonna expire on Friday. And on Friday, the price is gonna go up from $2,000 to $3,800. And then you don't wanna have to pay $3,800, so what do you do? You pull out your credit card, you open a new line of credit to buy this new TV, and now you're starting right back where you were. This goes back to having the right financial discipline because if you do not have the financial discipline to understand how to control your spending, you will never have the opportunity to build wealth. If you wanna be able to pay down your debt and be able to build your wealth, you need to have the financial discipline of knowing what you can buy. And this is where you gotta know what you can afford because we live in a spending culture and a debt culture where when you want something, you gotta have it now. And I want you to have the nice things. I want you to have the luxury things. I want you to have the exotic, expensive things I just want you to be able to afford it first. That means no more financing something that does not put money in your pocket. If it's not paying you, you can't finance it. And second, if you wanna be able to buy something, I want you to be able to afford it. And so when we're talking about being able to afford something, the easiest way to understand that is just to follow a rule of five. If you can't buy five of them, you can't afford one of them. So when you see that $2,000 TV and you don't have $10,000 in the bank, well, you can't afford that $2,000 TV. Now you might be thinking, but just put it, that's really hard. And you're right. Becoming wealthy is not easy. If it was, everybody would be wealthy. But this is where you gotta decide. Are you willing to pay that price today? That way you can pay any price in the future. If so, you gotta be willing to put in that work. That way you can have that extra cash. That way you can invest. That way you can build that wealth. Because once you have the wealth, hey, you can buy whatever you want. Because now you're wealthy. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, here's a video on investments that you need to own for life. And while you're at it, download our free guide on how to start generating passive income. And as always, keep hustling. If you still believe in the long-term value of this company, you're just not happy with the price, then you are switching sides. That's why you gotta start by understanding your goal and knowing what your strategy is, because if you're investing for the long-term, then you gotta understand, market crashes are a part of the game.